G'day, welcome back to the channel. It's time to bust something. I'm going to bust something wide open here. Look at this. This is a, a press release. or I, I got alerted to this by a press release that I saw on the news wires just this week. And it's, it's a company called Undefined Technologies. That comes up with something groundbreaking, something amazing. How about drones and vertical takeoff craft that don't have any moving parts? No propellers, no electric motors, no internal combustion engines. How cool would that be? I mean, imagine that and almost silent. In fact, they say silent operation. This is a breakthrough. This is amazing. And look, here's one here. This is on the, the homepage of the, or the webpage of the uh, Undefined I Technologies webpage. Let's have a look at what they've got to say about this thing. First of all, silent propulsion. Silent. What does silent mean? Silent means an absence of noise. No noise. Zero decibels. Yet, funnily enough, when we go down here, they say they're able to keep their noise levels below 70 decibels. Well, 70 decibels is not silent. So there seems to be a little conflict between this statement and this statement, um, which is always a red flag. When when they don't know what they... They can't get their story straight. You've got to be wondering about the red flag. And then they go and say, zero carbon emissions. Well, is it? Is it? Is it any more zero carbon emissions than an electric vehicle? Because it depends where the electricity came from to power the thing. Now, if it comes from... A nuclear power station, fine. If it comes from hydro, fine. If it comes from wind, fine. But a large amount of the electricity we use in the world today is still made by burning coal and coal is or burning natural gas. And neither of those are zero carbon. So you can't really claim zero carbon emissions unless you know the source of the electricity you're using to charge your craft. But hey, it's trendy to claim zero carbon emissions. It doesn't matter if they're just fudging it a little bit, does it? Anyway, they say adaptable to different atmospheres, space exploration. Yeah, um, like you haven't even got these flying on Earth. Space exploration, well, interestingly enough, interestingly enough that they say this, the only vertical takeoff craft relying on, on, on interacting with the atmosphere that has ever flown outside the planet of Earth is the helicopter. Was it Inspiration? I can't remember the name of the helicopter on Mars. The NASA helicopter on Mars, that flew, but it used a big couple of rotor blades because of efficiency. Efficiency. Now, they, they don't mention efficiency in here, which is very interesting. Then they say customizable to meet specific mission objectives. Well, yeah, but isn't every drone? Isn't every drone customizable? You can change the payload. You can, you can do all sorts of things to customize, especially if you're a manufacturer building these things in a bespoke fashion. They're all customized. Then we've got low maintenance cost. Well, yeah, we don't know because they haven't they haven't got one in service yet. We don't know what the maintenance is. And one thing to be aware of is when you're using high voltages, as this craft does, there are a lot of maintenance issues that don't occur on conventional craft. For example, if you're using what that, this, this corona wind that they're creating, this ionic wind, you have very high voltages. And that can cause coronas around the conductors, which can cause metal erosion. You also have problems with humidity causing tracking on insulators. There's a lot of things with very high voltages, extra high tension voltages, that need to be addressed in terms of maintenance. And... Th EHT generators, ext extremely high tension voltage generators, also tend to be not the most reliable of devices. There are the, the insulators are under a lot of strain inside those things. So we don't know, yet to be proven. Then it says reliable operation with redundant safety systems. I see nothing here that tells me there's any kind of redundant safety system on this thing, any more than any other drone. So I, I, I dispute that. Anyway, let's have a look. It says, well, actually, before we do that, let's go to the Wikipedia page because we ought to look at what ion propelled aircraft are all about. Now I'll talk a little bit, little bit about how this thing actually works. What happens is you have two conductors and between the two conductors you have a very large voltage difference and we're talking tens or hundreds of thousands of volts difference and what that does is it means that when uh, molecules pass over one of the conductors they are charged, they become ionized and because they hold a charge they're then attracted to the other conductor. So you end up with perhaps a, um, in this case we're operating in air so you get a perhaps a, um, a nitrogen molecule passes over one of the conductors, it becomes charged, it's attracted to the other conductor so it rushes between the space between the conductors and is attracted to the other conductor. So you get a movement, you get a movement of nitrogen and of course as those charged particles are moving between conductors they recruit other um, atoms or molecules in the air. So you get what's called an ionic wind. It's just a, a gentle breeze created by the flow of these ionized particles between the high voltage conductors. And because Newton says for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, uh, then this wind flowing in one direction produces a force in the opposite direction. So if you build a craft and you direct this ionic wind in a downward direction, it creates lift in an upward direction. So naturally, if you create enough of a breeze going down, your craft will lift off the ground. But the key thing is, how efficient is this? How much of a breeze do you get for all those volts? Well, if we look at the, the Wikipedia page here, it says, 
These systems generate a gram of weight per watt. A gram. A gram of force per watt. So let's say you want to lift one kilogram using the system. You will need to produce more than 1,000 watts. More than a kilowatt to lift a kilogram. So let's say you've built a drone and say your drone, how heavy do you reckon this drone is? I don't know. That looks pretty big to me. Would that be what, um, 100 kilograms? It's a fairly large drone. In fact, they have a video of it here. Let's watch the thing. Here we go. Get a bit of perspective. Look at that. That's a reasonably sized drone to me. Maybe let's be, let's say it's 30 kilograms. Let's say it's just 30 kilograms. And by the way, this is just a 3D rendering. It's not the actual craft. The craft doesn't exist. This is a 3D rendering. All these pie in the sky things are 3D rendering. So easy to do a 3D rendering these days. You don't need to build anything if you want to attract funding. You just do a 3D render. Hire someone with a blender. And look, there's our craft. Anyway, so well, no, let's say, um, yeah, let's say 50, let's say 50 kilograms as a middle weight. So with this level of efficiency, 50, 50 kilograms is going to require 50 kilowatts to lift it. 50 kilowatts to lift it. Do you know how big a 50 kilowatt battery is? That most electric vehicles have something like a 50 to 80 kilowatt battery, and that's the entire floor of the vehicle, and it weighs hundreds of kilos. So if you've got to get 50 kilowatts to lift 50 kilos of weight, and you're going to need a 800 kilogram battery. This is not going to work. It just doesn't add up. There's no way. In fact, if you were able to put a big enough battery in one of these things to make it fly, it would fly for seconds, just seconds at a time. Not minutes, not hours, seconds, because they're just not efficient enough. They just don't produce enough thrust. And that's why, despite the fact, as they admit here, it was first experimented, first discovered in 1921, there's been 100 years of development and technology on this thing, 100 years, and we still can't get them to fly, because the, the thing just doesn't generate enough lift. No matter how you look at it, no matter what you do, you are not going to get anything like the lift that you get from propellers or ducted fans or anything like that. Yet these people are going out there selling this this BS as, well, look, here it is. It's, it's look at it, there's a picture of it. We've got a video, We've got a video of it, look. The reality is that it doesn't it doesn't work like that but the thing also is remember they say that it's silent and then they go on to say 70 decibels they're making a big thing about the noise they're saying oh look, this is going to be great because it's so quiet it's silent or it's less than 70 db and they're claiming that a commercial drone does 85 to 96 decibels of noise um whereas you know 50 to 70 is acceptable well the thing is it only does that level of noise if you're really, really close. And if you're flying like a delivery drone, not that they'll ever really be a thing, it's going to be several hundred feet over your head. So you won't be listening. The noise level will not be 85 to 96 decibels. If that was the case, then we wouldn't be flying aircraft because aircraft are typically, you know, take a Cessna 172. If you're standing close to it, it can be over 100 decibels. It can be 110 decibels. They're really, they don't have mufflers. They don't have, they don't have silences on these aircraft engines. Yet we fly those over our heads all the time. This is really a big non thing, I, I, I believe. But let's have a look. They do have, they do have a test craft that they've flown, right? And they claim this is using their, their ion drive, their you know this technology. But I want you to watch this and I want you to listen. Listen very carefully to this demonstration. Yeah, did you hear an EDF start up then? I heard an EDF. That wine was an EDF. You had the frequency coming up and it's an EDF. And if you look closely on this thing, there's actually an EDF in the middle of this thing. And you can see at some stage, let me just make this full screen, it makes it easier. If we look here, at, when we get to full screen, you'll see some veins in the duct down here. Look, 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 here are some veins controlling the thrust, vectoring the thrust so they've got some level of stability so they can control it. This is, this is a fraud. This has got an electric motor and a fan in it. Listen, listen to that. That's terrible. Oh, no. You, no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> that is terrible. But look, they do it again here. This is another one of their videos. This time it's outdoors. And I'm not going to play the sound on this because they put music on it. So you couldn't hear the EDF very clearly. But it's another proof that there's an EDF in this craft. And I'll show you. Let's let's just start playing it. And we'll watch the video. Right, here we go. It's going to take off. Now you would expect, look how wide this craft is. You'd expect if this was creating a ionic wind capable of lifting the craft, then all this grass around here would, would be squashed down as the craft took off. Let's just see what happens to that grass when the craft lifts off. Waiting for it. That grass didn't move. That grass didn't move. There's no ionic wind blowing that grass down. There's that same craft. It's still got that EDF in the middle. That's what's lifting it. An EDF with some veins for, for stability. Now, it gets better because if we look at this footage here, just watch these houses in the background and see if you can spot. It comes up in a minute. Not quite there yet. Let me just have a look. Oh, these are the people on the ground flying it. Fantastic. 
and there it is way up in the air and let's wait till we go back look look at the jello look at the jello in that footage there's jello the wobbly background there's vibration this thing has vibration caused by the edf a spinning motor and fan create vibration that's what's causing the jello a, a a pure ionic here we go look again you watch look at the jello in the background there it's terrible there's jello all over the place now a true ionic thruster wouldn't do that because it's a continuous steady flow of air it's not um, a spinning rotating mass so there would be no jello if th these panels were providing the lift which they obviously are not and you'll notice as we come into land when we'd see that that the effect of the of the um, very broad downflow of gas this grass here would all be depressed um, you notice they cut away they cut away from the point where you would actually see there's a little bit of movement there that's what i'd expect from an edf as it comes out in a cone shape but when you get close to the ground so you'd see it look and the closer you get the smaller that area of disturbance is so there's nothing underneath the frame just where the edf is and then they conveniently cut away so you don't see it landing on the grass giving away the edf is actually providing all the lift oh, what do you think of that people <laughs> What do you think of that? It's terrible, Muriel. Um, yeah, and it speaks to this whole industry, this whole e-vertile industry. This, the drone industry is full, absolutely full of this sort of rubbish here. Renders, 3D renders, um, videos created with Blender. It's just, no, this, the, the reality, there's no reality. It's all hype, it's all hysteria, it's all give us your money and we'll build something that's really cool, even though that, that would defy the laws of physics to do so. And fortunately, this is actually starting to become, people are becoming aware of this. Even some of the companies that have been taking, are spending huge amounts of money supposedly developing these e vertol tax air taxis, you know, pilotless air taxis and things, it, things are coming down to ground again. A good example of this is just today, this company, Kitty Hawk. Kitty Hawk, they are probably one of the leading air taxi um, developers. They're coming up with this thing here, air taxi. Oh, we have helicopters. You don't need this. Helicopters run for hours on a single refueling. It's amazing. These don't. But anyway, they've been spending a lot of money, I think, including here in New Zealand, developing this craft. Yet, after years of work and countless millions of dollars investment, today on Twitter, they announced, we have made the decision to wind down Kitty Hawk. Okay? So even they have realized, it ain't going to work. This is not going to fly. This is not the future of air travel. Finally, fine. we've been saying this for years. People in the hobby have been saying for years, no, it's, it's not going to work. And we have our airspace being cleared out just sort of by the regulators so that these things can fly. But these things will never fly. This is never going to be a thing. There are so many things. And I've just about finished a video in which I explain exactly why these things are never going to be seen in our skies. And so stay tuned for that one. Um, and also delivery drones. Delivery drones are never going to be a thing. They really aren't. Because if we have companies like this touting this as a delivery drone, and as we can see, we go down here on this video, um, it, it's even weirder because look, look, oh, the, most of the thrust is blocked by this unit underneath the delivery thing, right? So it's only the very outside, what the outside, let's have a look. Well, actually, probably that's even better. If we go, if you look at this way, that's almost as wide as the thing. So most of your thrust is being wasted. It's being diverted. And every time you change the direction of an airflow, you extract energy from that airflow. So this is not efficient. There's no way this is efficient when most of your thrust is actually bouncing off your payload. And so this is all bullshit. It's all rubbish. It's all crap. And it's busted. Busted. Uh, if you if you want to comment on this, maybe um, the, what do they call themselves? Undefined technologies. They want to rip me a new one for exposing them. Maybe they're going to come, come back and prove me wrong. I don't know. Um, this is all my honestly held opinion based on what I believe to be the laws of physics and incontrovertible evidence to the contrary. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And in fact, I challenge undefined technologies to come back and prove me wrong if you can. There we go. Now to the comments with you, undefined technologies and everybody else. Tell me what you think. Have I, am I on the money with this one? Are we going to see these things silently at 70 decibels soaring around our skies anytime soon? Or is this just a big waste of money? Um, I don't know. You tell me. Um, and uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up so more people get to see it. It's important that this stuff gets out there. My, my, my video debunking the entire eVTOL e and drone delivery thing is coming soon. That'll be more important. But this one, just wanted to kick off with exposing the obvious, ridiculous nature of these claims and proposals and blue sky rubbish that people like this are making. That's it. Thanks for watching.
Don't forget to subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Bye for now. Overregulation is like a tumor. It's killing a hobby. It must be terminated. Now!